Are you ready for Christmas? How many times have you been asked that question this season? Or how many times have you asked that question to someone else? It was just yesterday, right before our candlelight service, someone standing out in the vestibule said, are you ready for Christmas? So that's my sermon title for tomorrow. Did you know that? Well, we all ask that question or have been asked many times. Are you ready for Christmas? I'm going to ask that we look, and we're not going to have this over the head today because some of our people are out of town today, but you can follow along or you can just listen. It is a very familiar story. You know it, and we have even made reference to the second chapter of Luke in the last few weeks through my series of Christmas sermons. But today we're going to be looking at the first seven verses of the second chapter. Actually, we could go all the way through the 20th verse in this chapter to get the full story. We're going to be looking at the first seven today, specifically speaking about the birth of Christ. In those days, Caesar Augusta issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the son of David, because he belonged to the house and the lineage of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for him in the inn. May God add his blessings to the reading, the proclamation, the understanding of his holy and blessed word. Every Christmas... Getting ready, that quote, getting ready, it seems to be everybody's main focus. Uh, some of you will start getting ready for Christmas next year, tomorrow, with the sales going on. Now, the definition of getting ready encompasses such a wide spectrum of areas in our lives. For instance, there's the gifts that you have bought. Maybe the gifts that you have yet to buy or to wrap. Traveling plans. We've all talked about making traveling plans. Some are away today because of traveling plans. Others may be in the next few hours. What about all the decorations to hang? Getting ready for that year after year, unless you just stay decorated all year long. And then what about all the food to cook? How many of you all have cooked and prepared food? I can't raise my hand on that one, but I can raise my hand on eating food that has been cooked and prepared. Uh, I, I'm sort of bragging about this a little. I think since Thanksgiving, I have had 15 meals. I mean big meals. And right now, I hope I can say this and keep saying it, I, I've lost a half a pound. So I don't know how I'm doing that, but something's working, okay? Because I really, if I had gained on every meal that I'd eaten, I'd be probably about 100 pounds more. What about entertaining family and friends? That's all a part of getting ready for Christmas. All those songs to sing. We've been singing Christmas carols since the last week of November. And what about preparing messages and services, worship services, all of that is a part of getting ready for Christmas. All this preparation of getting ready it has a tendency to just wear us out, doesn't it? Some of you are already worn out. I'll be glad when Christmas is over. I'm worn out because of all this getting ready stuff. But it should lift our spirits and help us to be much more thankful when we put aside all that other stuff that's a part of the hustle and bustle of it and to realize that we really are here to celebrate 
the birth of the Son of God. Not just any birth, although that's important. But this is the birth of the Son of God, God in a manger, God in the flesh. That's really what we're celebrating, incarnate, God in the flesh. But let's just suppose, or let's just think about what would happen What would happen if we didn't get everything done before Christmas? Some of you probably said, no, no, well, that's where I am. I haven't got everything done. It's not ready yet. Well, what's going to happen? What would happen if we just weren't ready? Christmas would still come. Ready or not, Christmas is here. Ready or not, we're here to celebrate the birth of a Savior. Are any of us ever really ready? How do you define the term ready for Christmas? And no matter what we do, or no matter what we fail to do, or we fail to accomplish, no matter if we're ready for Christmas or not, Christmas will come. Christmas is here. The celebration of the birth of our Savior is here. So why do we do all this worrying? Why do we do all this fretting about getting ready? And what does getting ready really mean? Well, when we think about the whole Christmas story, it appears to me that Mary and Joseph really weren't ready even though they knew well in advance that they were going to be having a baby. They were going to be having baby Jesus. Christmas was coming. And by that I mean the celebration of the birth of the Savior. Christmas is coming. Now, let's give some thought to this. We're told in Scripture, you know this story very well, I would think, Mary and Joseph left for a long journey, knowing that this baby would be born while they were away from home. And they would arrive there in Bethlehem, and they were tired. I'm sure they were probably hungry. There was no room for them in the inn. They did not have a 1-800 number to make reservations. And it is there at that scene that Mary goes in to labor. Now, they had known for some nine months that a baby was coming. Yet, by all indications, they had not made arrangements to to get a crib. Wound up having a baby in a manger. They didn't go to the Toys R Us there in Bethlehem and have toys for baby Jesus. I don't see any indication where they had any kind of registry signed up to go to Walmart for the diapers and the linens and baby clothes. All that we have is just simply Mary and Joseph in a stable with a feeding trough and some animals gathered around. Now, by our standards, they weren't even close to being ready for Christmas. They weren't even close to being ready for the birth of Christ, at least from our standards. But ready or not, Christmas was coming. The birth of Christ was coming, and it happened. Now, according to the gospel accounts and Actually, we don't have the birth of Christ recorded in all four Gospels. You should know that. I've told you that, okay? But it is recorded in the first three, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It appears that the Jewish people, and even their King Herod, and we've talked about him over the past few weeks, they were not ready for this, although they had known for centuries that a Messiah was coming. The prophets had prophesied this. They knew 
that Christmas was coming. Whatever that meant to them, they knew that a Messiah was going to be coming. This could be said of the entire world because even the leaders of the great Roman Empire had heard all these rumors about this king of the Jews. What I'm really saying is, is what we perceive and what we understand as being ready may be something totally different from the definition that our Heavenly Father has for being ready. See, I believe that Mary and Joseph really were ready. We may look at that story and say, oh, my, they weren't even ready. God had it all planned out. After eons of years, the world was ready to be delivered from its original fall. The plan of salvation was ready to take place. Christmas was coming. Whether they were ready or not. Christmas is coming. And we've known that for the past several weeks. We knew that this day was going to be coming. Ready or not. Whether you've got all those gifts ready, whether you've got them all wrapped, whether you've got them yet to buy on a sale tomorrow. Doesn't matter. Christmas is coming. It's here. It's here right now. The celebration of the birth of our Savior. Even though the prophets and, and the leaders of God's chosen people had misunderstood what I would call the veiled message. They misunderstood uh, the nature and the character of the Messiah. Ready or not, Christmas was coming. And that Christmas came, that first Christmas came when Christ was born. Even though King Herod did everything he could to lash out in a violent attempt, and maybe I should make that plural, attempts to strike down the coming king. But killing all of those babies two years, we'll, we'll, we'll find, we'll, we'll get the Messiah. We'll make sure, we'll get them all. But we'll make sure we've got that one in doing so. Yet, Christmas was coming. And guess what? It came. That first Christmas. So here we are. Having spent the past several weeks, maybe even months, getting ready for Christmas. And we've all done all those things in our own way to get ready for Christmas. To celebrate the wonderful gift that we have received. On that first Christmas over 2,000 years ago, it is my prayer that we will accept that we already have accepted, that we've already believed. And if not, if you're here today, if you're within the sound of my voice somewhere out there in the media world, and you have not accepted the salvation that Jesus Christ offers to us, God's greatest gift to us all, I pray that you will fully understand. Christmas is coming. And we can now say, Christmas is here. We're celebrating that. The gift of the unimaginable. The greatest gift of all. The gift in our hearts that when we come to know him and have a relationship with him, it changes our lives. From the manger to our hearts. As we look at ourselves and look at where we are, I pray that we can look in our hearts and find that Savior. Let us strive to be faithful. Let us strive to be the faithful followers that he would have us to be. Not just today, because we're celebrating his birth. Not just for a season. I think our biggest problem goes back to what Johnny was saying earlier. 
This is something we have to celebrate and emulate in our own lives every day. Knowing that he's not still in the manger. He's not still on the cross. But what he did on the cross, we're able to accept him into our hearts. A last thought. The world in which we live today really isn't much different in many ways than the world in which Jesus was born into. A lot of strife, a lot of trouble, a lot of heartache, a lot of pain. They had to move from the comforts of their own home because of conflict in the land. You see, they had a desperate need then. They had a desperate need for a Savior. That's where we are today. As a nation, as a world, we're still longing. We still have that same need for a Savior. I hope, I trust that you've brought that Savior out of the manger, off the cross, and into your own heart and life. Let's pray. Well, I've got... Good news is, this package is not for me. Bad news, not for you either. Okay? <laughs> but it is an object lesson. And I'm using it as an object lesson. This is really a gift for somebody else. I have no idea what's inside this box, okay? But it's neatly wrapped. Looks pretty nice. If it was my 